If you're looking for the answers, I still don't have them, but what I do have is a particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people who mislead, misinform, or misrepresent the sports card industry. So if you don't do that, I'll let it go. But if you do, I'm gonna talk about you. Guys, welcome back to another episode of the Sports Card Investigator Show. I am Andy, your ever grateful host. In our last episode, we discussed a few things that I thought warranted discussion. The the Bojacks that clear out the shelves by an, people making ridiculous purchases. And you know, guys, I really strive to give you something a little different when I come on and do a video. And I know it's not as often as I would like, but when I do, I want it to be worthwhile of your time. Because let's face it, time is a very valuable commodity. So if I say stuff that makes you scratch your head or riles you up a little bit, then great. That's that's honestly my goal. Um, but like I always said, don't take the hobby so seriously or too seriously. It will drive you crazy, which I am going to continue to do momentarily. Speaking of crazy, I did come across this beauty. Maybe I should make a reoccurring spot on the show. Dumb purchases of the hobby. Well, here you go. You know what you could do with $14,000? Don't worry, I'm not going there. We covered that in the last episode. It will just lead to mean comments. Speaking of mean comments, got a lot of comments on that last episode, mostly positive. And I want to thank all of you guys for watching. And to all our new describers, subscribers, welcome. I really mean that. Um, it's glad to have you here. And some people disagreed with my opinion. That's perfectly fine. Silly, but for perfectly fine. I love the discourse, even it was predictably childish. The keyboard cowboys, let's just say, were out in full force. And let me tell you, it was mighty entertaining. And I'm sorry, I apologize if I hurt your feelings. But to write a dissertation, to express discontent, okay, I get it. I get it. You disagree. But is it, is it really that important? Is it going to make a difference in your life? If it is, then I got some bad news for you, buckaroos. You got bigger problems than what this silly content creator says. It's supposed to be fun. It's a hobby. Don't take things so seriously. None of what I say should matter. It's my opinion. But if it makes you feel better by writing a novel on why it's just fine and dandy to clear out the shelves or make ridiculous purchases, then knock yourselves out. It actually helps the algorithm. But sometimes I think, thou dost protect, thou dost, thou dost, who said it, Shakespeare? Thou dost protest too much. There are some real meanies out there. You wouldn't believe. Someone called me whiny. Am I whiny? I don't come across as whiny. Well, truth be told, they called me Winnie, but I do appreciate the effort. So in keeping with that theme and giving everyone something to talk about and pissing off a select few, let's talk about some things that seem to be driving the hobby and at the very least major topics of conversation. It's, it's, it's like the never ending cycle of the sports card hobby. So what do you think it could be? Collecting? Nah, don't be silly. Flipping? Passe, nah. I'm talking about breaking and repacks. Yes, indeed, you may not realize it, but every time someone buys into a break, they are helping fuel the repack machine. I want you to think about this. All you guys that participate in breaks, you're feeding the very monster you despise. You're keeping it alive by giving it what it needs to survive. The never-ending stream of crap garbage cards. The cards you do not want. You see, it all starts with breaking. You guys pay good money for a chance to get that one elusive card you want. You watch the breaker, who's part magician, part actor, part game show host. He opens up the packs and reveals the cards. The thrill of excitement and the inevitable disappointment. 
Didn't get the card you wanted. Got stuck with a team no one cared about. What should we do with all those unwanted cards? No problem. You sell them to repackers. Oh, I would never do that, Andy. How dare you? Where do you think repackers get cards? You think they magically appear in the envelopes? Repackers buy these unwanted cards for, from you or the breakers at a really good price. Their mission, which they gladly accept, is to create repack products. You know those mystery, beautiful envelopes that promise guaranteed hits? Sounds exciting, right? Who would not want that? Repackers mix your unwanted cards with a few decent ones and voila! They have a new product ready to go. It's like, it's like magical recycling, but instead of saving the planet, it keeps the cycle of hope and disappointment alive. Wow. That was damn good if I don't say so myself. Now those repack products, they hit the market and they are everywhere. Everywhere. And some unsuspecting mark, I mean... Consumer buys one hoping to strike gold, but hey, there's always a chance of a good hit, right? And thus, the cycle continues. It's the cycle of sports card life, a never-ending loop of breaking, selling, repacking, and breaking and selling. Well, you get the idea. And I know you're going to argue that it's not every card they get that way, Andy. I know. Come on. They get their cards from other places. Where else would... I'd be able to dump this 2018 Shake Milton Astro or this Kyle Lewis PSA 10 Diamonds King or this Brandon Miller Gold or this Brandon Miller Auto. Come on, I gotta dump them somewhere because God knows the value is dropping like a brick in the ocean. If you think about it, breaks and breakers are feeding the repack market if you don't believe it, you're just being naive, and it helps keep the market thriving, the base card circling, and, well, us, us complaining. I know what you're thinking. Andy, you're, that's brilliant. I never thought of it that way. Well, that's what I'm here for, to educate and to entertain emphasis on the entertain. So remember, every time you buy into a break you're not just chasing a hit you're feeding that repack machine think about it i know it's going to drive some of you crazy maybe i'll even get a a what do you call that a uh, rebuttal video or something that'd be cool and you guys are going to vehemently degree and the, or disagree some of you will vehemently can you vehemently agree i don't know but some of you will vehemently disagree and there'll be some delicious delightful comments and bring them on i love them all but you know, there is some truth to what I say. You got to admit it. You, gotta, you probably never thought about it that way, but hey, that's what I'm here for. So that's all we got for today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you see, hit the like, hit the subscribe. If you don't like what you see, we've been through it before. That's impossible. And until next time. Oh, and to all the fathers out there, I don't know when you're going to get this. Probably a few days after Father's Day. Maybe, who knows, depends on when we get it out. But a belated happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Until next time, take care.